good afternoon students today in the 9th unit we are going to discuss the next topic that is the degrees of freedom what is the degrees of freedom is nothing but the coordinates that needed to specify the position and the configuration of a thermodynamical system that is the degrees of freedom so how much number has to be uh, needed coordinate number has to be needed for specifying it that is the degrees of freedom so the definition has to be given as the minimum number of uh, independent uh, coordinate needed to specify the position and the configuration of a thermodynamical system in a space it's called as a degrees of freedom of a system okay and uh, what is that degrees of freedom that will be given with the example that is a free particle moving along the x-axis needs only one coordinate so, so we know that the three coordinate system what is that x y and then z so if it is moving along only on the x-axis means so only one coordinate to specify it completely so the degrees of freedom is only one so that is a one degree of freedom similarly a particle moving over a plane so you know plane it will be moving on the right side and also the left side so it will be having two degrees of freedom and the next is uh, the particle moving in a space has a three degrees of so if it is moving in a space it will have the three degrees of freedom so like this uh, two axis and the space so in a plane it will have the two axis and if it is a space it will have the three degree axis suppose if the n number of gas molecules are in the container they will be moving means the total number of degrees of freedom is nothing but we are taken three into n that is three degrees of freedom and uh, 3 into n means 3 into the number of uh, gas molecules that will be the degrees of freedom how many molecules will be moving in that same three different axis that should be calculated as a degrees of freedom if suppose if the system has a q number of constraints means the degrees of freedom will have decreases then it should be equal to f is equal to 3n minus q so where n is the number of the particles next we pass on to the monoatomic molecule we know what is monoatomic it's a single atom so if it is monoatomic molecule means by virtue of its nation it will have nature it will have the three translational degrees of freedom so monoatomic means it will be moving along the three different axes so we are taking three different uh, degrees of freedom so f is equal to three so example for monoatomic is helium neon organ like that diatomic molecule means it will have two different uh, cases one for the normal temperature and the other one for the higher temperature so for the normal temperature the diatomic molecule will have two atom though that is bound to each other by the force of attraction so the molecule can be regarded as a system of two point masses so <clears throat> it's a, it will have the massless elastic spring so the center of mass lies at the center of the diatomic molecule so the motion of the center of mass requires three translation degrees of freedom so in addition they are diatomic molecule about three mutual perpendicular axis but the moment of inertia about its own axis so it's a negligible one so it has only two rotational so diatomic means it will have that two rotation uh, but three translational motion so the total number degrees of freedom will have the five okay and for the higher temperature that means a 5000 Kelvin means diatomic molecule will possess a additional 2 degrees of freedom due to the vibrational motion also. So that's why for the higher temperature the diatomic molecule will have 7 degrees of freedom. And then the triatomic molecule. In triatomic molecule we are having two different types. One is a linear triatomic other one is a non-linear triatomic. So in this type the two atoms lie on either side of a central atom. So like this. Linear means you know it it's a straight line one so o and then c then it will be again go so what happened it uh, the center atom will be there so the rotation only possible for the another two atoms so it will have what how many number of rotational atoms so it will have two two rotational degrees of freedom and for the translational it will have three so totally this will also have how many number of degrees of freedom for the linear <coughs> atomic uh, triatomic molecule it for this linear triatomic molecule will have the five degrees of freedom okay and non-linear means it will be like this okay it's a non-linear structure 
so in this case the three will be lying in the three different vertices and for the non-linear it will have the three translational degrees of freedom and also three rotational degrees of freedom so for this we are having f is equal to six do you know understand what is the difference of it three vertices means three will be rotate uh, with this uh, with that axis so three rotational motion we get but in the linear two only possible to rotate so we are getting only two rotational degrees of freedom that's why the change in the number of degrees of freedom for the linear and also the non-linear so for the non-linear you are having the examples of water and sulfur dioxide and next we pass on did you understand what is the degrees of freedom it is nothing but the coordinate to specify the minimum number of coordinate to specify the position and configuration of the thermodynamical system okay and next we pass on to the law of equipartition of energy so in law of equipartition of energy the average kinetic energy of the molecule moving in x direction we are taken that is of mv x square is equal to of kt we already get this equation from the last derivation Similarly, when the motion is in the y, y direction, so we are taking instead of Vx, we are taken as a Vy and for Z, Vz we are taken. So according to the kinetic theory, the average kinetic energy of the system of molecule in thermal equilibrium at the temperature of T is uniformly distributed to all the degrees of freedom. So each degree of freedom will get of kt energy this called law of equipartition of energy so everything will have the same of kt so this is a law of equipartition of energy so for average kinetic energy of monatomic molecule means f is equal to 3 so what you have to substitute in this f is equal to 3 means in the k degrees of freedom f in the place of you have to substitute with 3 3 into of kt so it, this is only for the monatomic so you will get the answer for monatomic as 3 by 2 kt same for the diatomic but diatomic you are having for the two different temperature one for the low temperature other one for the high temperature for low temperature you have to substitute the degrees of freedom as 5 so you will get 5 by 2 kt so for higher temperature it's 7 so you will get 7 by 2 kt for linear you are having same 5 so um, sorry 7 for the linear triatomic molecule it will have the 7 so f is equal to 7 by 2 kt and then for the non-linear triatomic it will have 6 into 1 by 2 kt so 6 means 3 for 6 and then 2 will get cancelled you will get 3 kt understood how you are getting this and next we pass on to the the next one that is applications of law of equipartition energy in the specific gas of a specific heat of the gas so this is uh, this equation we are get from the mayer's equation in the previous chapter cp minus cv is equal to r that will connect the two specific heats for one mole of an ideal gas law equipartition law of energy is used to calculate the cp minus cv and the ratio is nothing but mu is equal to cp by cv here mu is a adiabatic exponent so for monatomic molecule what is the average kinetic energy 3 by 2 kt so total energy of the mole of a gas is nothing but 3 by 2 kt into na you know how to calculate the number of moles that is into na na so what is the nk nkt is nothing but a r okay it's a constant uh, that is the temperature is only changing but the k and n will becomes as a r we are taken so this equation will we are getting as a 3 by 2 rt so for one mole the molar specific heat at the constant volume that is cv is equal to du by dt so d by dt of what is that value u 3 by 2 r rt and we are taking the derivation we will get cv is equal to 3 by 2 r cp is equal to cv plus r that is equal to in the place of cv what is the value 3 by 2 r plus r that is equal to 5 by 2 r the ratio of the specific uh, heats is mu is equal to cp by cr 5 by 2 r 3 by 2 r reciprocal it and you will get the answer as this so this procedure has to be repeated for the diatomic so in place of uh, 3 by 2 you are going to substitute as a 5 by 2 and again you are adding with the r you will get 7 by 2 and then mu the same value so you will get 7 by 5 again for the higher temperature it is different same 
7 by 2 you have substituted again you will get cp as a 9 by 2 for the diatomic triatomic also in the place of linear you are, you are going to substitute as a 7 by 2 you will get the answer and again non-linear you are going to substitute as 3r so you will get the answer as 1.33 so note that the, uh, according to the kinetic theory model of gases, the specific heat capacity at constant volume and the constant pressure are and independent of the temperature, but in reality it is not sure. So the specific heat capacity varies with the temperature. So from this what we are concluded means the temperature depend on the temperature specific heat capacity varying. Okay. Next we pass on to the mean free path. Mean free path is nothing but the average distance traveled by a molecule between two successive collision. So for two successive collision, what is the average distance? That is the mean free path. So we are going to calculate this in the terms of lambda. And the expression for the mean free path, that is for the kinetic theory of molecule of gases or random in motion, they will collide each other. So between the two successive collusion, a molecule moves along a straight line path with a uniform velocity that is mean free path. So for that we are taking a <coughs> system of molecule with the diameter of D. Let N be the number of moles molecules per unit volume. So assume that only one molecule is in the motion. All the other molecules are in rest. So we are considering only one molecule is moving. Other will be taken as a rest. If the molecules are moving with the average speed and the time, what is the distance? It's a Vt. And now the time t considered to move in imaginary cylindrical value. So we know that what is a volume? Pi d square Vt. Pi r square. No, that is pi d square Vt. Here we are taken as a diameter. So that's why we are getting that pi d square vt it collides with any other molecule whose center is within the cylinder therefore the number of pollution is equal to number of molecules in the volume of the imaginary cylinder which should be equal to pi d square t v n that is the number of uh, collisions number of molecules we are taken as small n so the total path Length path length will be divided by total number of collusion in time t. So that is lambda is equal to distance traveled by number of collusion. So lambda is nothing but distance is traveled vt and the number of collusion n pi d square vt. Vt vt will get cancelled and we will get 1 by n pi d square. We have assumed that only one molecule is moving at a time and the others are in rest. Actual practice all the molecules are in random motion. So the average relative speed of one molecule with respect to the other molecule will be taken in the account. Okay, so this is this will be given that all the uh, mo molecules will be moving. So lambda is equal to 1 by root 2 n pi d square. So this equation will give us that the mean free path is inversely proportional to what? What are the terms? Is inversely proportional to number density. And when the number density is increases, a molecular collusion increases so it decreases the distance traveled by the molecule before collusion so for this two uh, cases has to be considering that means rearranging this with the this means that is multiplying dividing by m and that is m n is a mass per unit volume and this will become the rho that is a density and m by root 2 uh, pi d square rho. So we have to know that pv is equal to n kt, p is equal to n by v kt, that is equal to n kt. n is nothing but p by kt and n is equal to p by kt is equation. We will get lambda is equal to kt. Just you are replacing the all the values okay, and substituting that value in the place of that n, small n and we are finally we are getting the kt is equal to root 2 pi d square p. So what this equation implies mean free path increases with increased temperature. As the temperature increases the average speed of each molecule will increase. It's the reason why the smell of hot sizzling food reaches several meter away than the smell of the cold food. Okay. So the temperature is main reason for it. And the mean free path increases with decreasing the pressure of the gas and the diameter of the gas molecule. So this is a mean free path. So uh, that's all your ninth lesson. So you have to read whatever the things has to be given here. It's a very, very simple lesson.